everybody. I'm Luna. Welcome back to Luna. Oi. On September 11th, 2023, Vietnam and the U.S. announced that their relationship would be upgraded to Strategic Comprehensive Partnership for Peace, Cooperation, and Stable Development. There have been many different reactions to this relationship upgrade, but in the West, they have mostly broken into two camps. First and most commonly, there are Westerners who hate communism and love the USA. These Western chauvinists see the upgrade in relationships between Vietnam and the USA as a proof that Vietnam has abandoned communism and is an official ally of the USA in its crusade against China. This includes the majority of the mainstream Western media, which has gained countless articles pushing this narrative that Vietnam is now officially on Team USA against Team China. The second most reaction I've seen in the West comes from people who are not a fan of the U.S. And since they don't like the USA, they have been panicked and frustrated at Vietnam for upgrading its partnership with the USA. Many of these are communists and anti-imperialists who believe that Vietnam is betraying the world communist movement by siding with the USA against China. Today, I am here to tell you that both of these reactions are rooted in a fundamental misunderstanding of the situation and what's really going on with Vietnam's foreign policy. So, let's begin by asking the question, what the heck is a strategic alliance? To begin with, there has been a lot of misinformation in the Western press about what this strategic alliance is, what it means, and how it applies. I have seen dozens of news articles from the West claiming that the Strategic Comprehensive Partnership for Peace, Cooperation and Stable Development is the highest level of relationship that Vietnam can have with another country, and this simply is not true. Vietnam has a unique system of grading its relationships with other countries. Most countries don't have any name relationship at all, so having any of the categories of relationship below with a country means that Vietnam views that country as especially important in terms of economic and diplomatic relations. There are four levels of relationship that Vietnam has. From lowest level to highest level they are. Number four, comprehensive partnership. This is the lowest level of relationship Vietnam can have with another country, and it has this level of relationship with 12 countries, including South Africa, Ukraine, and Canada. Number three, strategic partnership. This is the second lowest level of relationship Vietnam has with other countries, which Vietnam shares with 16 countries, including Japan, the UK, Germany, and Italy. Number two, comprehensive strategic partnership. This is the middle level of relationship Vietnam can have with other countries and the kind of relationship the USA was just upgraded to. Currently, five countries have a comprehensive strategic partnership with Vietnam, including China, Russia, India, South Korea, and now the USA. Vietnam is also working with Indonesia on upgrading to a comprehensive strategic partnership, which would make the total number six. But notice, this is just number second on the list of relationship levels, meaning they are one higher level of relationship Vietnam can have. So no, BBC and Reuters, the US doesn't have the highest level of relationship that is possible to have with Vietnam. There is one higher level, the great friendship and special unity level of relationship. Only Laos has a great friendship relationship with Vietnam, and only Cuba has a relationship of special unity. This level of relationship is much deeper than the comprehensive strategic partnership level of relationship and indicates the shared history of socialist struggle and mutual support and a degree of total trust which has been tested through time and hardship. The great friendship and special unity levels of relationship are much stronger ties than the comprehensive strategic partnership and go far beyond simple economic trade and diplomacy. We officially recognize the nations of Cuba and Laos as our special comrades in our path towards socialism and building world communism. So now that we understand that the USA does not actually have the highest possible level of relationship with Vietnam, let's talk about what kind of relationship they do have now that it's been upgraded to comprehensive strategic partnership. Let's talk about that word, strategic. In a Western mindset, strategy is usually thought of in militaristic and competitive terms. 
Strategies are usually thought of as plans which are used by one team to defeat another team. This extends to international politics, especially in places like the USA, where foreign relations are typically seen as a zero-sum game which involved military threats and aligned with friend nations against foe nations. This is probably why, when Vietnam upgraded the relationship with the U.S. to strategic partnership, many people assumed that it was some kind of military alliance between the U.S. and Vietnam. And Western mainstream media outlets clearly want you to believe just that. A quick Google search reveals how often the mainstream media implies that this strategic partnership is an alliance between the U.S.A. and Vietnam against China which is absolutely nonsense. Since Vietnam has had a comprehensive strategic partnership with China since all the way back in 2008, how could we have the same alliance with different countries against each other? The answer is simple. It's possible for Vietnam to have a comprehensive strategic partnership with both China and the USA because Vietnam does not consider foreign policy to be a zero-sum game. And when Vietnamese people think of strategy in this context, we think of economic and diplomatic strategy to develop our nation. We don't see it as a zero-sum game where one side wins and the other must lose. After so many decades of being colonized, invaded, attacked, and embargoed. Vietnam just wants to offer friendship to every nation on earth so that we can rebuild and continue our path towards socialism in peace. Anyway, it might help to understand what the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership is by just reading the official statement signed by the Zero Secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam Central Committee, Nguyen Phu Trọng. According to that statement, the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership includes strengthening of diplomatic, economic, cultural, and scientific cooperation. As far as defense and security, there were two sections. In one, the USA agreed it would help clean up more Asian Orange and unexploded ordnance left over from the war. In the second, Vietnam agreed to continue participating in United Nations peacekeeping operations, which it has already participated in for many years, and to continue communicating and cooperating in humanitarian and constructive efforts, such as addressing war legacies, military medicine, United Nations peacekeeping operations, and maritime security, in line with existing agreements and understanding between both countries. Nowhere does the joint statement mention anything like a military alliance nor an alliance against China. And remember, Vietnam has the exact same comprehensive strategic partnership with China, so everything it agreed to with the USA, it has already agreed to with China for 15 years already. As usual, the Western capitalist press is not interested in telling you the truth about Vietnam's foreign policy. They just want you to believe what serves the agenda of the capitalist USA the most. This is why these media outlets just distort and simplify the relationship as the highest level relationship and usually fail to mention that the relationship has already been established with China for many years because they want to build the perceptual reality of the situation instead of really explaining the actual reality of the situation. This concept comes from a great book called Inventing Reality by Michael Parenti. To put it simply, according to Parenti, the capitalist media is very insidious. It doesn't tell you exactly what to think because that would be too easy to recognize as manipulation. Instead, they create a false reality around you and base all of their stories and coverage on that quote-unquote reality. That way, your opinion is formed without you even realizing it. You are basically given a particular framing of the situation that is completely invented by the media. Usually there are two sides of this invented reality, conservative side and liberal side. You can feel free to agree and disagree with either side, but you still have to think about the situation within that fake framework. That is exactly what's going on in this situation. We have two camps. One camp who hates China and think Vietnam is joining an alliance against China, and that's good. And another camp who hates the USA and thinks Vietnam is betraying China, and that's bad. When the truth is that Vietnam is not betraying China and not allying against China and not even allying with the USA at all. It's all a false framing on the situation intended to keep you from seeing actual objective reality. All right, now that we've broken free from perceptual reality, let's keep exploring actual reality. 
I want to help you understand the theory behind Vietnam's foreign policy and why the idea that Vietnam is forming a military alliance against China with the USA is absurd. First and foremost, you need to fully understand Vietnam's very consistent foreign policy that we publicly announced all the way back in 2009. The basic question which this policy answers is, will Vietnam get dragged into another senseless war or become the puppet of another country ever again? And the answer is no, 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 and no. Seriously, we call our foreign policy the 4-no policy. At first, it was called the three no policy, and then in 2019, we added one more no, so it's now the four no policy. Here are our four no's. No military alliance with any countries. No alignment with one country against other countries. No permission for any country to put military bases in our territory. No use of force or threatening to use force in international relations. Now let's go through these four no's one by one so we can all fully understand Vietnam's foreign policy. Number one, Vietnam does not join any military alliance with any countries. Vietnam has been very consistent for decades with our rule, thêm bạn bớt thù, which means more friends, less enemies. If Vietnam joined a military alliance, we would be tied to one side, both financially and diplomatically. It could become necessary to make concessions to the interests of foreign power and to sacrifice our own national sovereignty. Sooner or later, it would become necessary to join one nation against another, and before long, Vietnam would have lost and lost of enemies and maybe even get drawn into another war. We have had enough war, we know better than most nations how destructive and horrible war is, and we would do everything we can to avoid getting dragged into another one. That is why Vietnam choose not to participate in those kinds of military alliance, and instead, we stand only for peace, justice, and defense of international law according to the United Nations. Remember, Vietnam's communist government barely survived the Cold War. We did have a solidarity from our socialist comrades like Cuba and Laos, but otherwise, we were alone and bullied by the entire capitalist world. We didn't have money and our entire infrastructure was devastated by decades of war, and our only strong trading partner, the USSR, was collapsing. All we had to rely on was the bravery, wisdom, strength, and unity of millions and millions of Vietnamese people and leaders who carefully applied the principles of dialectical materialism and scientific socialism to our harsh conditions. The establishment of NATO in 1949 and various other alliances lorded over by the USA have ensured that there has always been a great deal of international tension even after the fall of the Soviet Union. The USA uses its soft power to push nations to confront each other in order to serve its own interests. Vietnam has managed to navigate this hostile brinkmanship without getting drawn into conflict, and that is no small task. Okay, now let's look at the second note. Vietnam does not align with any countries against other countries. The reason for this is simple. Vietnam does not want to become a puppet of any other country, and we do not want to bully any other country. We were pushed around and invaded by alliances of imperialist countries for decades, and not only do we not want to do that to any other country, we don't want it to happen again to ourselves. If you can't tell, our experiences going through decades of war really shapes our approach to foreign policy. In our opinion, military alliances and use of force are not optimal methods for defending our nation today, but this does not mean that Vietnam ties its hands and just submits to stronger countries. On the contrary, our insistence on maintaining independence and self-determination has the effect of unifying us, both in thought and action, so that we can think and act independently, creatively, and never be dominated by foreign powers again. It is this kind of true freedom and independence that we strive for, and we also hope every other nation can learn from our example and build similar policies. Vietnam truly wants to be a friend to every nation on Earth as much as possible. Sometimes, this is very difficult, especially with imperialist anti-communist nations who see Vietnam's successful socialist policies as a threat to capitalist dominance. But in our present objective conditions, this is our optimal path. 
give us the best chance of improving our living conditions and building our path to socialism. So Vietnam does what it can to expand the international relations, to be a friend and a reliable partner while maintaining our own self-determination in the world. And we do work very hard to support our comrades in other socialist nations through our successful foreign policy. Just a few days after signing the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership with the USA, our president traveled to the USA and made a speech calling for an end to the embargoes against Cuba. Việt Nam khẳng định sự đoàn kết với nhân dân các nước, trong đó có Cuba, và kêu gọi Hoa Kỳ chấm dứt bao vây cấm vận chống Cuba. I believe that this speech had much more impact in this context. It showed that Vietnam wasn't going to just bow down to the USA and would continue supporting our Cuban comrades, and the agreement wasn't going to stand in our way. The results of Vietnam opening up and reaching out to the world are unmistakable. Just a few decades ago, Vietnam was under heavy embargo and had relations with very few nations. Today, Vietnam has a state diplomatic relations with 193 out of 200 countries worldwide. Our foreign and defense relations are expanding. We have a defense relations with more than 80 countries on all five continents, and in particular, with all five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. We send liaison officers to work with the United Nations peacekeeping mission and participate in peacekeeping in South Sudan, Central Africa, and many other countries. In fact, Vietnam's UN forces are internationally famous for teaching productive farming methods to impoverished nations around the world. Okay, now, so let's look at no number three. Vietnam does not allow any countries to put military bases in our territory. This one is pretty simple. Vietnam does not accept foreign military bases on our territory, and we don't allow any country to use part of our territory to wage war against other countries. Modern history clearly shows us that if there are foreign military bases on our territory, it is easy to turn our country into the target of hostile forces, or will at least make it difficult for our country to avoid being drawn into conflict and wars between countries. Not only that, but military bases become headquarters for intelligence operations which are used to destabilize and infiltrate nations, and we already have enough problems with imperialist nations running those kinds of operations in Vietnam to NGOs and other such organizations. The fact is, the U.S. has been begging us to allow them to put U.S. military bases in Vietnam, especially naval bases on our coastline. The mainstream media reports this like it's a done deal, implying Vietnam would definitely let the U.S. do that, especially since U.S. aircraft carriers have visited Vietnam a couple of times. But we also let large ships from China and many other nations come and dock in Vietnam for diplomatic missions temporarily. There is a big difference between hosting a foreign vessel for peaceful diplomacy versus letting militaries set up permanent bases in our territory. Whenever any nation has asked to build a base in our territory, our very consistent answer has always been a big no. Number four, Vietnam does not use force or threaten to use force in international relations. We do not speak with violence. We only use negotiation and communication to solve conflict of interests. But to be clear, this principle does not contradict the purpose of modernizing the military or the primary mission of the Vietnamese armed forces, which is to defend the country, including by using force when necessary. If Vietnam ever does have to go to war, the Vietnamese must be prepared to take up arms and defend the nation, keeping our peace just as we did in the last millennia. Throughout thousands of years of history, building and defending our country, our people have experienced many resistant wars against invaders. Being proactive and wary of the enemy is a valuable lesson from ancient times. But at the same time, we strive to make more friends, to cooperate in joint development, because the lives of our people can only be improved during peace. These are lessons we have earned through experience over many, many centuries of being invaded and attacked by foreign nations. So we want to maintain our strengths so we can defend ourselves, but we never want to bully any other country or threaten violence. And why should we, when peaceful and friendly negotiation has been working so well for Vietnam? 
Okay, those are the four notes. I hope that gives you a better insight into Vietnamese foreign policy. I also hope that you now understand the true nature of the new comprehensive strategic partnership between Vietnam and the U.S. Just like our comprehensive strategic partnership with China and many other countries, it's first and foremost a means to increase trade and strengthen our internal development and had nothing to do with military alignment. During the very same meeting where Vietnam upgraded relationship with the U.S., our General Secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam, Nguyen Phu Trọng, strongly reaffirmed these healthy and consistent foreign policies. Tổng Bí thư Nguyễn Phú Trọng đã trao đổi về những thành tựu Việt Nam đạt được trong gần 40 năm đổi mới toàn diện nhằm các mục tiêu dân giàu, nước mạnh, dân chủ, công bằng, văn minh, phát huy xây dựng nhà nước pháp quyền xã hội chủ nghĩa và chủ động tích cực hội nhập quốc tế. Tổng Bí thư Nguyễn Phú Trọng nêu rõ đường lối đối ngoại nhất quán của Việt Nam là độc lập tự chủ, hòa bình, hữu nghị, hợp tác và phát triển. Việt Nam thực hiện đường lối quốc phòng 40. These words carried a lot of special meaning. Vietnam wants no confusion and misunderstanding about the true meaning of this new strategic partnership. I want to close by speaking directly to ultra leftists who want to attack Vietnam for building peaceful relationships with the USA and China at the same time. I can understand your sentiment. I myself have spoken many times about how much I hate the US empire, and I'm not alone as far as that goes. Do you really think Vietnamese communists of all people do not understand the true nature of the USA? Many of our leaders were alive during the war against U.S. imperialism, and nearly every Vietnamese person, including me, lost family in the war against the USA. We have been heavily embargoed by the USA, and to this day, the U.S. supports fascists in Vietnam who try to destabilize the country. Maintaining peaceful and friendly relations is no small task for Vietnam. Yet somehow, Vietnam has managed to form a relationship with the USA that is not only productive, but benefits Vietnam far more than it benefits the USA. And I don't think Vietnamese diplomats get nearly enough credit for this hard, complicated work they have to do. Okay, that's all I have to say for now. If you have any questions, just write in the comment section and I will try to answer them all. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye.